Due to countless scientific advances in the past decades, DNA-based technology is steadily gaining ground in all aspects of our lives, and particularly so in the computer market. We're here with Ian Johnson, a security researcher from the University of Plymouth, to discuss the emerging issues. Let's begin with data storage. Can you explain why DNA is superior to conventional technology? Thanks for having me on, Tom. DNA has been revolutionizing data storage for the past few years. The storage capacity of a single gram of DNA is hundreds of thousands of times greater than that of current hard drive technology. You say that data is stored in strings of DNA. Are these capable of evolving and changing the data? The US Development Agency DARPA has developed a tamper-proof encoding scheme that ensures the organisms are capable of reversing any natural mutation that will otherwise corrupt the data they carry. It claims that Google's DNA-based custom information storage system was contaminated with synthetic information-stealing bacteria. Last month, Ian's team at Plymouth University disclosed an exploit targeting a previously unknown vulnerability affecting several major DNA storage platforms. So Ian, how does this exploit work? In order to target DNA-based technologies, you need to develop DNA-based attack tools. Um, over the past years, we've been developing an attack tool that is capable of circumventing the biological quarantine that is designed to counter contamination from external pathogens. Our approach uses a small piece of data that, when encoded and introduced to uh, DNA-based storage, produces a self-replicating virus rather than a dormant piece of DNA data. Fascinating. How would you counter something like that? Initially, encoding used on these systems must be updated in such a way that regardless of the input data, the resulting DNA will never possess the sequences necessary for self-replication or other malicious behavior. Um, but further to that, DNA attacks still rely on pre-DNA attack vectors. Uh, so if an attacker is unable to deploy the virus onto the system, the threat is basically non-existent, and so defending against social engineering and user malfeasance should remain an integral part of any defensive measure. Now, have you heard of any other cases where DNA-based technology has come under threat from synthetic pathogens? Many of UK scanner systems, such as those which handle temperature monitoring and nuclear power plants, have recently been fitted with backup power generators that run on microbial fuel cells. Um, these fuel cells are powered by bacteria. Um, they offer enormous gains in terms of reliability and sustainability. So how is the security and commercial world coping with all these emerging threats? The US and the UK have recently passed a law requiring all commercial pathogens to be digitally signed. Uh, this signature takes the form of a DNA watermark that ensures the pathogen's authenticity using public key cryptography. Older pathogens that are still using RSA are advised to switch to post-quantum cryptography due to the increasing availability of quantum factorizers. In addition to digital signing, all government contractors and companies producing DNA-based circuits in electronics and pathogens capable of synthesizing certain dangerous proteins and chemicals are required by law to apply DNA obfuscation techniques to prevent the adoption of uh, the technology by organized crime groups and uh, terrorist cells. And what about the ethical implications of DNA printing technology? Uh, since the early adoption of DNA printing technology, we've seen a steady trend towards much tighter regulation and in some instances prohibition of the technology. We're already seeing a daily increase in the number of DNA-based attacks aimed at earlier, uh, less secure DNA systems. And there are concerns that without strong regulation, uh, a large black market will emerge. Uh, Thank you very much. Back to the weather.